55 together in your hymnal 395. I have a song that Jesus gave me. In my heart there rings a melody. Let's all stand together as we sing 395 all together. I have a song that Jesus gave me. singing this morning. Welcome to the morning service. And uh, if that melody isn't ringing in your heart, you can take care of that matter today. Amen. And uh, you can have one before you leave the service this morning. Thanks for being in church today. Looking forward to a good service together. Let's open with a word of prayer, shall we? Heavenly Father, we bow before you now this morning. We thank you for another Lord's Day that you've given to us. And Lord, thank you for the great salvation that you provided for us through Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness to us through the week and for each one that's come to gather together here this morning. I pray, Lord, that our hearts will be open to what you would want to say to each of us today. Bless the music. Bless our fellowship together. Uh, honor the giving of your tithe and our offerings. And then, Lord, bless the preaching of the word of God today. Use it to accomplish your will in our lives. And, Lord, if any in the room have never received Christ as their Savior, that today would be the day they come to receive him. And to him that received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So, Lord, control the service. May you be pleased. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Amen. All right. You may be seated. Amen.
Amen. 268 in your hymnal. 268. I will sing of my Redeemer and his wondrous love to me. 268. We're going to sing that first, second, and last stanza together. I will sing of my Redeemer and his wondrous love. Now some announcements, sports. Listen carefully, if you would, please. We have our schedule today. Uh, we have a 5:30 Christian growth class, and uh, we encourage all new believers to come to that. And uh, but it's open for anyone who'd like to attend. Uh, that's 5:30 in our conference room, uh, right across from the nursery tonight. And of course, our first lesson start to cycle over again tonight will be about salvation, uh, understanding just what that's all about. Uh, it is receiving Christ as your Savior, but there is much more than that that sometimes you don't realize uh, that you received when you got saved. And so it uh, gives you a good foundation upon which to build a life. And so uh, we invite you to be there for the Christian growth class, uh, Sunday evening, 530 in the conference room. And then 630 tonight will be a regular evening service. And uh, tonight I'm going to talk about the, the lucky lepers. Now, that doesn't usually go together, does it? But uh, you come find out what that means, and uh, you, you will be helped this evening. Don't, don't miss that. The lucky lepers, all right? And uh, we'll do that this evening. Now, a reminder, uh, this week, instead of Wednesday night, we move the Wednesday night service to Tuesday evening, and uh, it's our worker appreciation service, and uh, it's, a, it's a great time. Uh, that we have together, and uh, we'll still have a message on Thanksgiving, and, uh, but we honor our workers. Uh, we have many, many people that serve the Lord uh, here, 
at Bible Baptist Church, and we take uh, just, just that service a year to just give honor to whom honor is due. The real reward comes when we see the Lord Jesus, and uh, we're rewarded by Him, but uh, we want to be able to express our gratitude and our appreciation to folks who serve the Lord. And so that's uh, Tuesday night. We have a great time together. Uh, don't miss that on Tuesday evening instead of Wednesday evening this week, all right? Then um, there is a men's breakfast on December the 5th. That's a Saturday morning, of course, and uh, that's just $3 for the best breakfast you, you can find in uh, Grove City for sure. And um, a sign-up sheet down on the table, and uh, you sign up and uh, show up. And we have a great time together December 5th. That's at 8.15 on December 5th. And then, ladies, your Christmas meeting is Monday, December 7th. And uh, it is a progressive dinner. You will leave the church at 6.15 p.m. sharp. Uh, it says here, you're going to have an ugly sweater contest. Okay. So there you go. The... the s just the sweater that has to be ugly, okay? And uh, then you bring a... Was that bad? <laughs> All right. Let's see. What else do you bring here? It also says you bring... Uh, oh, it says bring a winner. That's what it says, okay? And then it says bring a wrapped pair of Christmas socks. for your. They're going to have a Christmas exchange. You're going to exchange... Socks. All right. So it's going to be a wonderful time, ladies, and uh, you'll go from house to house and eat something different at each house. And uh, somewhere along the line, you're going to judge your ugly sweaters and you're going to change socks or something. So, all right. So <laughs> you you have a good time. All right. There'll be a, is there a sign up sheet for that? Is that what you're doing? Yes. OK. Sign up for that downstairs as well. And uh, you'll have a great time, and um, you'll have a good time. We'll say more about that later. All right? Okay. <clears throat> let's take a minute, and let's welcome our guests that are with us today. We're always pleased when folks visit with us in the service. And uh, if you're here today for the first time, not a member at Bible Baptist Church, or if you brought a guest with you today, we'd love to meet you, find out who you are and where you're from. And would you honor us just by standing right now for a moment? We could find out who you are and where you're from, okay? All right, go ahead, Richard. All right, Terry, you want to introduce these folks? It's all right. Right, they were here last Sunday. Okay. All right, great to have you, Robert and Barbara. Thank you for being here. That's great, all right? And you know what? You don't, you filled that card out last week. You don't need to fill another one out, okay? That's all right. Huh? Oh, you got to well, that sure, uh, fill it out. All right. All right. Okay, a little bit. You fill those out a little bit. We have the offering. You just put those in the plate along with $20 from Terry, and we'll be... <laughs> And we'll update your records for you, all right? Thank you. All right. all right, right back here. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you for being here, Bob. If you're ever... If you're ever in line at Walmart and you're a little short on cash, you better hope Bob Wallace is behind you. <laughs> He'll take care of it for you, all right? And uh, he did that for this gentleman, gave him a, a church track, and uh, he, he come to church this morning. It's good to have you this morning. Thank you. All right? Rob Beach. Your daughter? You just call her daughter? Uh -huh. You do have a name. Charlotte, I think, isn't it? Charlotte, good to have you this morning. Thank you for being here. Have you back home, huh? Hold on, hold on. We'll clap for everybody in a minute. You guys just, just pretend like I, I'm the leader, okay? Even if they're not. You, just, you do what you want anyway, but I mean, just act like it, okay? All right. Thank you for being here. Let's... Uh, 
Take care of the cell phones as usual, all right? Keep them on quiet if you would. That'll be a blessing. Good to see the Jarvises here today and for Thanksgiving. And uh, glad, always good to see you guys here. And uh, glad you get to be with the family around Thanksgiving time. That's good. All right. Now, visitors, if you'll take just a minute and fill the card out, we appreciate that. In a little bit, when we have the offering. Just put the card in the plate. Keep the pen as our gift to you for coming here this morning. We're glad you're here. Let's give them all a warm welcome, shall we? Forty-six, two, four, six. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Moving on to higher ground. Two, four, six. Blessing that first together. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I'm onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up. I want to live above the world, though Satan's darts at me are hurled, for faith 
has caught the joyful sound, the song of saints on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land, a higher plane than I have found. Lord, blend my feet on higher ground. As we sing this last stanza, let's have the children going out to junior church. Let's sing that last together. I want to scale the utmost height and catch a gleam of glory bright. But still I'll pray till heaven I found. Lord, lead me on to higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land. The higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Amen. 223, if you would. Back to 223. I am thine, O Lord. I have heard thy voice. Draw me near, 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 blessed Lord. Two, two, three. Let's all stand together one more time as we sing. On that first. I am thine, O Lord. I have heard thy voice and it told thy love to me. But I long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer drawn to thee. Draw me near. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope, and my will be lost in thine. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer. and greet one another. Make somebody feel welcome, especially our guests. We'll come back and sing that last stanza together. The pure delight of a single hour that before thy throne I spend. When I kneel in prayer and with thee, my God, I commune as friend with friend. Draw me nearer, nearer. 
nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me near, near, nearer, blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Let's all find our seats as we sing that last together. When we sing again, that is kind of cute to find your seats. All right. There are depths of love that I cannot know till I cross the narrow sea. Let's sing that all together, all right? There are depths of love that I cannot know the narrow sea. There are heights of joy that I may not reach till I rest in peace with thee. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. All right, let's sing that last, that chorus one more time without the instruments. Hopefully you found your seats. On that course, one more time. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to thy precious bliss. seated. Good singing this morning. Be ready to take the offering now today. Give as God has blessed and prospered you and if you filled out the welcome card just place that in the plate when it goes by if you would and we'll ask God's blessing on our giving this morning. Had a good morning yesterday out at London Correctional Facility. Had um I think 17 of us there and um, one new fellow that came in and we had one that received Christ their Savior. Uh, on Thursday night down at the Central Reception Center, we had 23 men that received Christ their Savior. It was a wonderful night down there. And so God gave us some good services there and uh, the men on Saturday morning do a great job out of London. One of those guys is Brother Danny Wright and uh, brought a good message yesterday and we'll ask him to lead us in our prayer this morning, if you would please. Or Danny. Father, we just thank you for uh, another opportunity to come to your house, Lord. I'm so grateful, Father, that our joy doesn't come whether the Ohio State Buckeyes win a game or not. <laughs> that our joy comes from you. And uh, we serve on a team who's never been defeated. team of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes. Father, we just ask that you would be with us today. We're grateful for all the things that you're doing in, through, and for our church. We thank you for all the different ministries that, uh, that are here at the Bible Baptist Church. And we just pray for the men at, at the CRC and the men at the London Correctional Facility, Father, and everybody here in this room that they would build a personal, intimate, real, life-transforming relationship with you, that we would get the wrong people out of our lives and the right people in. Amen. Anybody that keeps us from drawing nearer to you, Father, be with the pastor as he opens up the only book you've ever written. Speak to us today. We need to hear from you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. amen.
want you to take your Bibles this morning to Genesis chapter 25, please. Genesis chapter 25. Two verses we're going to read together this morning, verses 7 and 8. <clears throat> Just two verses, so we'll read them in unison. Genesis chapter 25 and verses 7 and 8. And as our custom is, let's stand together to read the scripture. All of us standing, please, to read God's word. Let's begin together on verse 7. Ready? And these are the days of the years of Abraham's life, which he lived, a hundred, three score, and fifteen years. Then Abraham gave up the ghost and died in a good old age, an old man and full of years, and was gathered to his people. Father, add your blessing to the reading of our scripture here this morning. And Lord, prepare us, continue to prepare us, uh, that our hearts would be ready to receive what you have for us from your word this morning. Lord, I pray that uh, our heart would be good soil, that the word of God would fall into and bring forth fruit, that each of us would desire to listen this morning and desire to be doers of the word and not hearers only. And so, Father, bless the special. And use it to make our heart ready and put us in tune with thee. It's in Christ's name I ask it. Amen. There are things as we travel this earth sifting sands. That transcends all the reason of man. But the things that matter the most in this world, they can never be held in our hand. I believe in a hill called Mount Calvary. I believe whatever the cost, and when time has surrendered and earth is no more, I'll still cling to that old rugged cross. I believe that the Christ who was slain on that cross has the power to change lives today. For he changed me completely, a new life is mine. That is why by the cross I will stay. I believe in a hill called Mount Calvary. I'll believe whatever the cost and when time has surrendered and earth is no more I'll still cling to that old rugged cross I believe that this life with his great mysteries Surely someday we'll come to an end. But faith will conquer the darkness and death and will lead me to last to my friend. I believe in a hill called Mount Calvary. I'll believe Whatever the cause, and when time has surrendered and earth is no more, I'll still cling to that old rugged cross. I'll still cling to that old rugged cross. <clears throat> Father, we bow before you now in prayer. We thank you, Lord, for 
so loving us that you gave your only begotten son to die on the cross for our sins. Lord, thank you for the payment that's been made. And now we have the gift of eternal life offered to us. Not because anything we do, but because of what Christ has done. Lord, I pray now you'd help us as we open up your word and look at it together. I pray, Lord, that you'd give us understanding as we look into your word this morning. I pray, Lord, you'd keep us from distractions this morning, that each of us would consider carefully the subject that's before us today, and that is full of years, a full life. And I pray, Lord, that you would speak to hearts as only you can do. Lord, I pray that holy decisions will be made for you this morning that will affect us both now and for eternity. In Jesus' name I ask it. Amen. It's interesting in Genesis 25, if your Bible's still open there, where it talked about Abraham, and it's talking now about the death of Abraham. And Abraham is 175 years old, and he's dying. And it makes an interesting phrase here, where it says, He died an old man full of years. Full of years. You know, we're only here for a short time. You know, I was thinking some of the great preachers that I had the the privilege, what I consider to be great men of God, that I had the honor to hear, uh, Dr. Lester Roloff, and got to to know and meet personally. Got to hear Dr. John R. Rice and Dr. Jack Hiles and Dr. Lee Roberson. Dr. Tom Malone and Dr. B.R. Lakin. Some of the great men that have all gone to heaven now. Some of you are thinking of preachers that maybe you grew up with and that you had the honor to hear and to hear preach who are now in heaven. And, and, and I remember several of them. I remember exactly what I was doing when I got word that they had gone to heaven. I, I, I know where I was and what I was doing at the time. You know, and I got to thinking, uh, if the Lord tarries, uh, there'll come a time when uh, you'll get that word about me, or I'll get that word about you, that you've gone, and that you've passed on into eternity. But it's said of Abraham that he died full of years. The only time that expression is used in the Bible. Uh, it said of Isaac, he died full of days, and it said of David that he died full of days. And I want my life to be that way, don't you? I want your life to be full of days. And what it, what it really, uh, I, I want to I get as much out of life as I possibly can. If we only get three score and ten and we may not even get that, I want to get all of it out that I can. You know, a psychologist, William Morrison, reported that 94% of the 3,000 people he surveyed 94% of 3,000 people that he's personally surveyed were enduring today to get to tomorrow. They were enduring today to get to tomorrow. I hope you don't know anyone like that. I hope you're not like that. Tomorrow, I'm going to get a vacation. Tomorrow, I'm going to get the house clean. Tomorrow, I'm going to start the diet. Tomorrow, I'm going to start going to church. Tomorrow, I'm going to start saving my money. Tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. The only problem is, tomorrow never comes. Once you get to tomorrow, it's today. Today's the tomorrow you're worried about yesterday. Think on that a little bit. But I want to die saying I lived a full life. Literally, that phrase means termination of life without reluctance. Termination of life without reluctance. How's that done? How do you, how do you live a full life? How does, how, does that, how does that happen? And I think it very simply, I'm going to give you something very a, a simple way, and I think the Lord gave us, God gave us a simple way to remember it, and He gave it to us, I think, 
in the names of His Son. And the Bible says that He's called the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ. And I just want to look at those three names. And I think embodied in those three names and and our relationship to those names will determine how full of a life we live. Now, follow me. The first name is Jesus. Let's take that name first. The Bible says in Matthew 1.21, the angel came to Joseph and he said that Mary's going to have a son and you're going to call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins. God, uh, the angel announced to the shepherds, unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. He's the Savior. That's what Jesus means. He's the Savior. And my friend, He's the only Savior. He's not just a Savior. He's not one of the Saviors. He's not one of the many ways to heaven. My friend, there's only one way to heaven. And that's by faith in Jesus Christ. There is no other way to get there. And if you're not saved and your sins are not forgiven and you don't have eternal life and you never have entered into a relationship with Jesus Christ, I just have to ask you, how do you sleep at night? How do you, how do you go through another day not knowing that if something happened to you, you'd end up in eternity? You see, sometimes on uh, social media, they'll put up some videos and a particular one I just saw recently was uh, they must have dash cams and they were showing these uh, wrecks in snow, snowy conditions. How quickly people lose control. I noticed in almost every one of these, Brother Jarvis, somebody was going way too fast. Somebody's trying to pass, somebody's trying to, you know, regardless of the conditions. But, but you know, just that quickly, this, this young man who Brother Yoder mentioned in our Sunday school, 24 years of age, just going to work like any other day and was doing some, I think, repairing some cable equipment and, and electrical lines where they weren't supposed to be or too close to where, and, and the electricity jumped and burned his face and went into his, in through his face and out through his foot and the young man's going to have his, part of his leg amputated tomorrow. But you understand, just that quick, life could be over. Just that quick. How do, you, how do you do that knowing I'm not saved? How do you live every day like that? Uh, uh, you know, playing Russian roulette, clicking the gun, hoping that you got an empty chamber and you get another day to live. I, I, I wouldn't let another day go by. No wonder the Bible always stresses that now is the accepted time. Behold, today is the day of salvation. Oh, if I wasn't saved, if I didn't know Jesus as my Savior, I'd certainly want to take care of that immediately. I'd want to take care of that today. Now listen, receiving Christ as your Savior, that won't solve all your problems. You can, uh, and listen, it'll solve a big problem, that is you're not going to hell anymore. Your sins are forgiven. But, but it won't solve all your problems, but it will solve your biggest problem. Because I believe this, I believe life begins when you meet Jesus Christ. I, I don't think, uh, life begins at 40. Well, I don't know about that. But I know this, life begins when you meet Jesus Christ. When you receive Him as your Savior. You're saying, what a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. I've lied in my soul for which long I'd sought since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart, since Jesus came into my heart, floods of joy are my soul like the sea billows roll. And watch just the, the waves come in. I said, did you ever just have those waves of joy come over your soul? Why? Because you were saved? Because you knew Jesus Christ as your Savior? Hey, I've said it before recently. Uh, straight is the way, narrows the, narrows the way, straight is the gate that leads to life, and few there be that find it. Praise God, I was one of the few. And it's all God. <coughs> I could have been born to a family in Pakistan. I could have been born to a family in Iran. Could have been born to a family in China. But God put me in a family in the United States of America. Into a family where I had a saved dad. And said, and said my family's going to church. 
And I got to hear the gospel in early age, and at six years of age, received Christ as my Savior. Man, every now and then, waves of joy ought to just come over your soul that you're saved. Jesus is the Savior. The songwriter said, life is purpose now it never had before. There's meaning to each day and even more. For a joy and peace I can't explain is mine. Since I found new life in Christ, my Lord divine. Oh, it is wonderful to be a Christian. Oh, it is wonderful to be God's child. Oh, it is wonderful to have your sins forgiven. It is wonderful to be redeemed, justified, forever reconciled. Isn't it wonderful to be saved? Isn't it wonderful to be a Christian? Boy, you ought to thank God for that. Jesus delivers us from the penalty of sin. That's, that's death and hell. But Jesus also delivers us from the power of sin. The Bible says sin doesn't have to have dominion. It doesn't have to have control over us. That's why in the RU program, listen, we say only the truth makes free. Oh, wait a minute. The truth isn't something. The truth is someone. It's Jesus Christ. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And so when the truth sets free, it's Jesus Christ. He breaks the power of canceled sin. He sets the prisoner free. Friend, you get to know Christ and He makes you free from the power of sin. That's why Paul would write to the Romans, let not sin have dominion over you. If sin has power over you this morning as a Christian, it's very simple. You're letting it have power over you. Christ is able to deliver thee. He's able to deliver thee. He's the Savior. And eventually, He'll deliver us from the presence of sin. When we get to heaven, there'll be no sin there. No struggle anymore there. We'll be completely rid of the presence of sin. Jesus is the Savior. But then there's a second name that He's given. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. In Luke 6 and verse number 46, the Bible says, Jesus said, Why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I say? He's not just Jesus, He is the Lord Jesus. He's not just, listen, He's not just the Son of God, He is God. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God, the same was in the beginning with God. The Pharisees got upset with Jesus because He said He made Himself equal with God. Well, he could do that because he is God. And so he's the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I say this? I think you'll live full of days. I think you'll live a full life when you learn to submit to Jesus Christ as your Lord. When you're unsaved, you live under soul control. Your soul is made up of your mind, your will, and your emotions. What I think, what I want, and what I feel. That's how, that's how the unsaved person lives. How do I live? Doing what I want, doing what I think, doing what I feel. That's why, that's why so often when you invite somebody to come to church who's not a Christian, they usually say, I'll see. Or I'll try. What they mean is, if I feel like it when I get up, I'll come. If I don't get a better offer, then I'll come. But, but I'm going to do what I think, what I feel, or what I want. And, and it's so, you know what, it's so easy in the prison to talk to those fellas about it. And I say, fellas, you spent your life under your control. You spent your life doing what you want, what you thought, what you felt. How's that work for you? All I have to do is look down at the prison blues and say, it doesn't work so well. Now the truth of the matter is, we don't have prison blues that, that you're living in, but there are people in this room this morning that are more in prison than those fellas who are behind bars. You don't see it. We don't see it as obvious as we see it in them. But, but in the reason, by the way, the reason that you're still in prison is because you're still living under soul control. You're still in control of your life. Doing what I want, what I think, and what I feel. 
You see, when you receive Christ as your Savior, when you receive Jesus as your Savior, the, the, another person of the Godhead takes up residence in your body. It's called the Holy Spirit of God. And the Bible says He begins to live in you. Now the Holy Spirit of God is there to tell you not what you want and what you think and what you feel, but what God wants and what God thinks and what God feels. Now, we have a choice to make. Do I still live under my old management of my soul and do what I want? Or do I listen and do what God wants and what God says, what God fears? Which is it going to be? You see, will I submit to Him as my Lord? Will I do as He tells me to do? Or will I still do what I want to do? You're never going to have a full life. You see, the Bible says a double-minded man is what? Unstable in all his ways. Only a Christian can be double-minded. Well, I want to do what I want. I want to do what I think. I want to do what I feel. Yeah, but I know this is what God wants. This is what God feels. And, and, and well, do I do what I do? I do what God and that's why he, the Old Testament prophet said, how long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, then serve Him. And if Baal be God, then serve Him. Jesus put it this way. He said in the book of Revelation, I wish you either hot or cold. Now, listen, that's, that's hard. Because if you ask me, if you ask me as a pastor, okay, would you rather have somebody just show up on Sunday morning and not come Sunday night, not come Wednesday night, just kind of be half-hearted about it? Yeah. I'd still take that. But Jesus says, half-hearted Christians make me sick. Jesus says, half-hearted Christians make me puke. So you shouldn't say that. Don't ever say it. He does. He makes him make me sick. God says, man, listen, if he's your Lord, then do what he says. If he's the Lord Jesus, then submit to him. That's growing. That's growing. Every time that you feel like, hey, you ever come to church when you didn't feel like coming? And you didn't want to come? And yet you knew that's what God says you should do? And so you said, okay, I'm going to go because God says I should go and I should be there? You know what you just did? God just developed you a little bit more. God just brought you a little further. Because you're learning to obey Him and live under His management, not yourself. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to His own way. And the Lord hath laid on Him the iniquity of His all. How do we go astray? We turn everyone to His own way. Just have a seat back there, please. 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 Thank you. We turn everyone to his own way. And, so, and that's, that's when we go astray. Why? We're doing it the way we want. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I say? And still, say, still do what you want to do. See, he tells me, oh, listen, <laughs> obey the Lord. Do live, live the way God says to live. God isn't out to try to hurt you. God isn't out to try to make life difficult for you. I want to, to, to do what He wants me to do. Hey, I want to think the way He wants me to think. I want to feel the way He wants me to feel. I want to go where He wants me to go. I don't want to get caught up into, well, I don't think this is so bad. I don't they see what's so wrong. I don't think this is a big deal. I, I'm not about what I think or what I feel. I want to know what does God say about it. And I'll do whatever God says. I want to obey Him as my Lord. People say it's my life. I want a happy life. You can go that way if you want. I'm going to do what I want to do. I deserve to be happy. You won't be happy. Let me tell you who the miserable person is in the room today. Listen. The miserable person is not the person who doesn't know Christ as their Savior. They're, they're, they're enjoying the pleasures of sin for a season. Now you don't have peace in your heart because the Bible says there is no peace, saith the Lord to the wicked. 
And that's why you always got to have commotion, noise, something going on all the time. Because if you just be still and be quiet, you'll know that he's God. But listen, uh, the miserable person in the room today is the Christian who is not obeying God. You're miserable. You're double-minded. You're thinking that I can do what I want and I can live the way I want and I can do whatever I think and, and it's not working out so good. There's no fulfillment in that. There's no satisfaction in that. Jonah thought he could do what he wanted. How'd that work for you, Jonah? Demas, Demas thought he could do what he wanted. How'd that work for you, Demas? Judas did what he wanted. It won't work. Happiness, oh listen, listen, happiness is not in everyone knowing you. Happiness is not in having more clothes with a certain label on them. Happiness is not in getting a bigger house. Happiness is not in getting a luxury car. Happiness is not found in getting a fatter bank account. That's not where happiness is. Happiness comes from obeying Jesus Christ as your Lord. Where I'm living the way He wants me to live. Oh, that's happiness. Listen, I don't know what it's like to live on the other side. I don't know what it's like to just live a life of rebellion against God. But I know what it's like to live for God. I know what it's like to live in obedience to the Lord Jesus. And I'm telling you, it's a great life. I'm testifying to you, it's a full life. If God chose to take me home today, I would say I had a full life. I'm ready to go without reluctance. I'm, I'm, I'm full of days. and I'm pleased to have obeyed Him as my Lord. Is He Lord over your TV kingdom? Is He Lord over your music kingdom? Well, now I know you think this music isn't good, Pastor, but I don't see anything. Well, I don't think this is so bad. It always goes back to what you think, what you feel. So who's in control? Who's in control? Is He Lord over your friend's kingdom? Who you hang with, who you run around with, who you spend time with? Is He Lord over your computer kingdom? Is He Lord over your language kingdom? The songwriter said, only to be what He wants me to be. Every moment of every day. Yielded completely to Jesus alone each step of this pilgrim way. Just to be clay in the potter's hand. Willing to do what my Lord commands. Only to be what He wants me to be every moment of every day. He's the Lord. He's the Lord. Jesus, there's many of you in the room this morning, look at me. There's many in the room this morning who say, Jesus is the Savior. He's my Savior. But you can't say He's your Lord. Because you still want to be in control. It's time for you to bow the knee and say you're in control. I'll do what you want, what you think, and what you feel. Not what I want. So we said Jesus, we said Lord, and then the last one of course is Christ. Christ. Christ means anointed one. It means He's the King. I obey Him as my Lord... I am to crown Him as my King. I want you to turn in your Bibles to 1 Kings chapter 3. Would you turn there please? 1 Kings chapter 3. Just go to your right from Genesis. You really can't go any way but right from Genesis, can you? Genesis and go past 1st, 2nd Samuel. Get past those and you'll come to 1 Kings. And I want you to go to 1 Kings chapter 3 if you would please. Here's, let me bring you up to date of what's happening. Solomon has become king. And 
two women appear to him before him. He says, here's what's happened. Uh, one of them, was, they were sleeping with their babies in their bed and one of the ladies rolled over on her baby and killed her. She woke up, realized what she'd done. She took her dead baby, stuck it in bed with the other one and took the other one's live baby and of course woke up in the morning and said, oh, too bad about your baby. And the lady said, that's not my son. That's my son. No, it isn't. This is my son. So they go to Solomon to, to figure it out. And so they both present their case to Solomon. In verse 24, here's what the king said. Bring me a sword. And they brought a sword before the king. And the king said, divide the living child in two. Give half to the one and half to the other. Then spake the woman who the living child was unto the king, for her bowels yearned upon her son, and said, O oh my Lord, give her the living child, and in no wise slay it. But the other one said, Let it be neither mine nor thine, let her but divide it. And so the king, of course, said, Give her the living child, and in no wise slay it. She is the mother thereof. Now listen, all Israel heard of the judgment the king had judged, and they feared the king. For they saw that the wisdom of God was in him to do judgment. Now notice, now understand, we, we, put, we put chapter divisions in the Bible to help us to locate things. But if you didn't have that chapter division, what's the very next verse say? So Solomon was king over all Israel. Wait a minute. He already was king. They came to him to, to decide what to do with this baby issue. You understand? Though he And listen, listen. Christ is the king. But is he your king? Solomon was the king, but they made him their king. There is a difference. There's a difference between someone being the king and you saying he's my king. Hey, there are people in this room today who look and say, and when they look up here at the pulpit, they say, well, that's the pastor. And they're right. The pastor of the church. But there's other people in this room who look up at the pulpit today and they say, that's my pastor. There's a difference. I'm the pastor, but to some, they say I'm my pastor. I'm, uh, th that I'm their pastor. He's the king. Christ is the king. But do you look at him and say, he's my king. He's my king. See, he was king over all Israel, but there came a day when they crowned him king. And they made him king personally. I think when you crown him king, it's, it's, it's when you do what he says, not because you have to, but because you want to. I think that's the day you make him the king. When you crown him king. You do it not because you have to, but because you want to. You, you want to give and you want to tithe. Not because you have to, but because you want to. You desire to. You'll never, you'll never get to being a generous giver as long as you feel like you have to give. It's where you get to where I want to give. I want to give to God. I want to do what He wants me to do. Read your Bible because you have to or because you want to. It's great when you crown Him as your King and then you realize I get to read His, Bible, His Word. I get to spend time with Him. Do you have to be at church? Or do you want to be at church? Do I have to or do I get to? Do I have to be around other Christians? Or do I get to be around other Christians? I want to be around other Christians. Not, how much longer is this service? Huh? But, I hope it's just the third quarter. He's your king. Will you crown him as king? Will you make him your king? 
Now listen. Are you, say, are you saved? Have you taken Jesus as your Savior? Old psalm we used to sing, the do Lord, you know, I took Jesus as my Savior. You take Him too. You receive Him as your Savior. That's where it starts. You won't get, you won't get to the other. You, you won't be able to obey Him as Lord. You won't be able to crown Him as King if you never know Him as Savior. That's where it all starts. You have to receive Him as your Savior. Will you obey Him as your Lord? Will you say, not my will, but thine be done? Will you come to where you crown Him as your King and say, I will do all He wants me to do and I want to do all that He wants me to do. God's not going to have to drag me along with my heels making ruts in the ground. I'm going to want to do what He wants me to do. The Lord Jesus Christ. Just a side note, some of you like to study or read. You know, if I ask you what was, as far as we know, what was one of the most carnal churches in the New Testament? Church of Corinth. Just, just read the first few chapters of 1 Corinthians and note how many times that Paul writes the words, Lord Jesus Christ. Over and over and over again. That's what they needed to get out of their carnality. You know what carnality is? Carnality is flesh. Carnality is me doing what I want to do. Me living the way I want to live. Me still in control. The songwriter said, His power can make you what you ought to be. His blood can cleanse your heart and make you free. His love can fill your soul and you will see it was best for Him to have His way with thee. Will you let him have his way with you this morning? I'm telling you, it's the only way. You're going to live full of years. It's the only way you're going to have full days. And you'll be able to die without reluctance. Let him have his way with thee. Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray, shall we? Father, take the truth now this morning. Thank you for everyone's attention today. Lord, thank you for, the, for your word and for the truths that we looked at this morning. Thank you, Lord, how you gave the titles to your son. You said, let's call his name Jesus. Let's remind everybody he is the Lord Jesus. But don't forget he's the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the anointed one of God. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And Lord, I pray this morning. I pray first, Lord, that those who have never received Him as their Savior, that today would be the day. That they would say, I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. And Jesus is the Savior I need. And they take Him as their Savior. Those who know Him as their Savior, I pray that today they would bow their knee and say, He's my Lord. I will do as He tells me to do. I want to be under His control, not my control. I want to do what He wants, what He thinks, what He feels, not what I want, what I think, what I feel. He is my Lord, Lord of all the kingdoms of my heart. I pray many will bow the knee to Him as Lord and then those who would say, I'll crown him as my king. I will desire to do what he wants me to do. I will not take it as simply a subject obeying his Lord. I want to take it as a grateful sinner loving his Savior. And Lord, may love be the great motivator of us desiring to do what God wants us to do. He's the king. We know, we know he's the king. May we crown him our king today. And may we say that's my king. And may many crown him king of their life today. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. I'm going to finish praying in just a moment.
But I wonder how many folks here this morning would say, Pastor, there's a time in my life when I knew that I was a sinner who needed a Savior. And I knew that Jesus was the Savior I needed. And there's a time when I called on Jesus and from my heart I trusted Him as my Savior. And I know that I'm saved. I know that I have eternal life. Pastor, here's my hand as a testimony. Would you hold it up just for a moment that I may see it? Pastor, I know that I'm saved. All right, you may put it down. If you're here today and would say, Pastor, I I can't say that I've ever had a time when I called on Jesus and I told him I was a sinner and I knew I deserved to go to hell, but I believe he died for me and I, from my heart, trusted him as my Savior. Would you let me pray for you? Not going to embarrass you, not going to call you out, but I'll remember you in prayer. Would you slip your hand up and say, Pastor, pray for me? Just slip it up and put it back down. I'll see it. Is there someone like that today? You couldn't raise it the first time, but you'll raise it this time. Would you do it? Say, let me pray for you. Thank you. The message was mainly to believers. You know him as your Savior. I wonder how many believers here today would say, Preacher, he's my Savior, but I have not yet made him my Lord and I have not yet crowned him as my king but the Holy Spirit has spoken to my heart this morning and that's what I desire to do pastor pray for me this morning would you slip your hand up Christian yes amen amen God bless you great you may put them down in a moment we'll pray we'll have your invitation What you heard this morning, my friend, can be, seriously, it can be as life-changing as the day you got saved. Because it will change the way you live on this earth. And it will give you the joy and the happiness that so many are looking for and can't find. The Lord Jesus Christ provides that for you. When you live a life yielded to Him. In a moment, I'll pray, and we'll have our invitation. When I'm done praying, we'll stand to our feet. Once we stand to our feet, the piano will begin to play. Bob will sing. God has spoken to your heart. You need to come. You need to respond. Come to the altar. Bow your knee. Take him as your Lord. Crown him as your king. If you want someone to talk to you and show you from the Bible how you can know Jesus is your Savior, then when others are coming to pray, you slip out and come and and just, just get my attention. We'll have people here who've been trained. They'll take a Bible, show you how you can know you're on your way to heaven. Whatever it is that God's dealt with your heart about, you respond to him this morning. Heavenly Father, have your way now in this invitation. Thank you for speaking to hearts this morning. Hands have been uplifted, Lord. And God, I pray that each individual now would do exactly what you're telling them to do in their heart. That your will would be done in every heart and life. Lord, we would be yielded to whatever it is you would want us to do in our lives. To take our lives and let them be consecrated, Lord, to thee. May holy decisions be made for you these next few moments now. And I'll thank you for it. With your heads bowed, you stand to your feet. As you stand to your feet, the pianist will play. As she plays, Brother Bob's going to sing. God has spoken to your heart. Respond to him this morning, will you? You have longed for sweet peace. And for faith to increase And have earnestly, fervently prayed But you cannot have rest Or be perfectly blessed Until all on the altar is laid Is your all on the altar of sacrifice laid your heart does a spirit control you can only be blessed and have peace and sweet rest as you yield him your body and soul would you walk with the lord in the light of his word 
and have peace and contentment always. You must do his sweet will to be free from all ill. On the altar your whole you must lay. Is your all on the altar of sacrifice laid? Your heart does a spirit control. You can only be blessed and have peace and sweet rest as you yield him your body and soul. Oh, we never can know what the Lord will bestow of the blessings for which we have prayed. Till her body and soul he doth fully control and are all on the altar is laid. Is her all on the altar of sacrifice laid? Your heart does a spirit control. You can only be blessed and have peace and sweet rest as you yield him your body and soul. Who can tell all the love he will send from above, and how happy our hearts will be made. Of the fellowship sweet we shall share at his feet, when our whole on the altar is laid. Is your all on the altar of sacrifice laid? Your heart does a spirit control. You can only be blessed and have peace and sweet rest as you yield him your body and soul. Thank you. 
Go ahead and be seated if you would, please. Appreciate your attention this morning. It's good when God works in people's hearts, isn't it? It's good. We're glad to have Leland Hamilton coming this morning. Leland, stand up for us if you would, please. Leland, of course, is saved, baptized, a member of the church here. He says he's coming forward to make him Lord and King of his life. Isn't that good? Wanted to make that public. Amen. That's good, Leland. Praise the Lord. It's good. You know, what you said, why would you make something like that public? Because everyone can help you to keep it. Okay? You know, it's like the fellow who came forward and he knelt at the altar and prayed. Then he whispered to the pastor and the pastor went over and he said, I want you to know I'm going to quit smoking. Give up cigarettes. The pastor said, man, that's great. He said, come here. He said, what do you mean? He said, come up here. He said, well, what? He goes, I want you to get up and tell the whole congregation that. He goes, oh, pastor, if I do that, I'll really have to quit. <laughs> yeah. When you say it publicly, see, now we've got witnesses and we're going to help you to stay on that path, all right? Amen. And uh, that's good. Then we're glad to have Henry and Melinda Rodriguez coming for membership in our church this morning. Isn't that great? Praise the Lord. And, um, be transferring from another Baptist church in our area, and then also Marie Brown is coming for membership this morning. That's great. It's Amanda's neighbor, and uh, Marie been saved and scripturally baptized, and wants to belong to our church. Praise the Lord, Marie. God bless you. All those in favor of welcoming these into the fellowship of our church, let it be known by a hearty eye, Aye. and opposed by like sign. Praise the Lord. That's great. Wonderful. We do have a couple others that came forward for salvation, and they're being dealt with right now. And we want them to be thorough with them and take their time so we won't rush that process. But uh, you pray for them and uh, we'll look forward to seeing what the Lord does in their lives, all right? Well, it's been good to be in church today. And uh, I'm glad I came. And uh, hope you're glad you came. And uh, look forward to being back tonight. Now, 5.30 for the Christian growth class and then 6.30 for the evening service. And uh, let's make it a good Lord's Day, all right? Uh, when we pray, I want you to... Uh, you can go back, you take them back, and uh, Miss Wallace, you guide Marie back if you would, and uh, let's make sure they get to the back so everybody can welcome you on the way out. When you go out today, if, if you'll let me just elbow you or fist bump you, I, I, something's, something's coming on me, and I don't want to give it to you. And uh, so uh, please, just if you'll allow me to do that today, I appreciate it, and I'll try not to cough on you or anything like that, all right? And uh, we'll do that. You know well, you know, I thought about putting him back there. Well, I'll, I'll go back there. All right, I was going to say I let Bob go back there. And Tanya, Tanya's here. She's in the back. Why don't we let Bob and Tanya stand back there and you shake his hand. Whatever you'd say to me, say to him. <laughs> See how that works, huh? But, uh, appreciate Bob and Tanya so much and what they mean to us and so they'll take our spot back there, and then uh, we'll look forward to being back tonight. Let's stand together, shall we? Father, thank you for a wonderful morning this morning. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness to us. Lord, thank you for that you give us all things that pertain to life and godliness. And all that we need is found in Jesus Christ. Lord, thank you for so great a salvation. Now, Father, thank you for these decisions that have been made today. Thank you for these whom you've led to become members here at our church. That we might serve together. We pray we would honor your name. And that you would allow us to serve together till Jesus comes for us. Lord, we love you. We pray for these who are being dealt with. That you'll, be, you'll open their heart to the gospel today. Change their life from this day forward. Lord, thank you for being our God. Give us a good afternoon and bring us back this evening for the service. And we ask it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by His blood. Join tears with Jesus as we travel this side. For I'm a part of the family, the family of God. God bless you. You are dismissed.